The challenge was survival because I suffered a sexual assault when I was in Germany. I ended up with a guy who didn't respect my boundaries and took advantage of me. He was another soldier. And I've learned that even though I made some bad decisions, the bad things that happened, I didn't deserve them. I was 17, an army recruiter came to my school. So I didn't really search for a branch. It kind of found me, but you know, the best one found me, the army. I joined because there were two options. My mother and I talked about them both. One was college and one was something else as long as it gets you out of my house. <laughs> so I knew I didn't want to go to school. I didn't want to go to college. I had made my mind up about that by junior year of high school. And so went and took the ASVAB and everything without my mom even knowing it. And I argued to her, look at these high scores I got. This is meant to be, I'm meant to be in the Army. And she let me do it. She signed the papers. I served from 1978 to 1982. I was one of the first women to train co-ed at Fort Jackson, South Carolina in the summer of 1978. I hadn't even thought about training alongside of men. It was challenging. Emotionally, there's been a lot of challenges because I suffered a sexual assault. When the incident occurred, I was stationed in Aschaffenburg, Germany. I had been out drinking and, and partying and hanging out, you know, like soldiers do on off-duty times. And I made some bad decisions. I did report it. Um, I went to the clinic and nothing ever happened. I isolated myself for a long time, um, away from other soldiers. I ended up drinking a lot, trying to deal with the shame and the emotions that I experienced after that, and there was nobody to talk to. So I carried that with me for so long. I still do. I pushed everything down like it hadn't happened, and I just went on. You never feel the great things that happened to you when my kids were born and things like that. You can't allow yourself to fully enjoy that because you don't feel like you deserve it. It took me losing a corporate job, facing homelessness. Just, there was nothing else. I just had to look at me, and that was hard, but it was necessary. And it finally, finally happened. And it would, oh my God, it was like 30 years later because I found a community of women and mental health professionals that have gathered around me. There's so many of us that have lived, not just surviving, we're thriving. I rediscovered my joy for music and performing and falling back in love with myself and with my kids and stuff. It's been a journey. And there's still dark times. It's, it's not all roses, but I know that I'll make it. I've made it. I mean, I'm sitting here, I'm talking to you. So I made it and I'm not stopping here. I'm a commitment keeper. I'm a survivor. I'm an overcomer. I'm a winner. I'm a powerhouse. All because I had that experience it was horrible. It was difficult, but it made me who I am. And I think when you go through something, your gift and your experience come together and they line up and they create a passion. So I have a passion for healing because I've had to heal and the creative arts has helped me do that. So I would love to be a part of there being more performing arts healing based for female veterans. And I'm personally on a mission to be where I need to be to see if that can happen because that's my passion. Things can happen that can bend you. They don't have to break you. So being a veteran means strength, it means pride.